All right. So let's start this again. Peace and power ele elevation be to all you beautiful people. This your girl Tiffany coming through here live in the fat. And for Women History Month, I am going to be on the subject about um, women throughout the history and throughout the world that has made contribution and dedication. And also we know that when it comes to dealing with history, it's also the good, the bad, and ugly a part of it as well. So I want to put my focus on this particular topic because a lot of people may not know about this woman, all right? She was a prophet and she had her own Christian movement. Yep, I said Christian, Christian movement. All right, the name of the Christian movement was called Antonism, right? So Antonism, which was the movement that was started in Congo, it was a Roman, it's a Roman Catholicism set. OK, it was named after St. Anthony. All right. Um, and also she was a prophet of the Congo Empire. All right. So her name is Danya Patrice Kimpa Vita. Danya Patrice Kimpa Vita. That's her name. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the information I'm going to go into the history behind it. Now, I remind you, she was a very young woman and she was bright. OK, so, um, you know, oftentimes we don't hear much about Central and West Africa history. And the reason why we don't hear that much about Central and West Africa history is because it's not often brought up as a subject. Now, why am I going this far back? But because we have to look at our ancestry. Our ancestors, they came up out of Central and West Africa and they were brought over here to the Americas. OK. So it's important that we talk about that aspect of history. If it's a lot that we don't know. And it's a lot of information that has to be covered regard to this. So I try to find as much as I possibly could. Um, it's not really easy coming across sources like this. So I found as much as I could. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some information with you guys. And I'm going to do some book reviews uh, on the books that I found. So. And then I'll make sure that I share with you guys on my YouTube because I can't share it on my Facebook at the moment because I'm I'm suspended on my Facebook account and I'm having issue with my Instagram account. All right. So my Instagram been hacked for those of you that's been following me on Instagram. So I apologize if y'all got all kind of random messages and things like that. Okay. All right. So, anyways, let me go ahead and get started. And make sure you subscribe and share and like the channel and hit the notification bell. OK, whenever I come on. And so that way you can be able to share with your friends or your family or your colleague or whoever. And y'all have a discussion about this subject or whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All righty. OK, so. As you can see, and hello there, brother. Cool to the fullest. How you doing? What's up? Thank you for coming through. Thank you. All right, so uh, as you can see, we're going to check out the biography. Now, this is a painting of her. Okay, that's a picture of her. Okay, and this is the statue of her right here. Okay, that's a statue of her. So, Danya Batrice Kimpa Vita. Okay, she was known by several names, as you can see. She was a Congo Empire prophet and leader of her own Christian movement, Antonism. This movement taught that Jesus and other early Christian figures we're from the Congo Empire. All right, and we're going to get into the Antonism after a while. But let's continue. The name 
Danya indicates that she was born into a family of high Congolese nobility. She was later given the name Batrice after the Catholic saint. Her teaching grew out of the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church in Congo. Yes, they did have a Roman Catholic Church in Congo. Now, I remind you, this is around the 1600, 1684, okay? So the transatlantic slave trade was taking place, but as far as, um, but it was not as, the number was not as high as it was when it got to the 1700s and 1800s, okay? All right, so, so in other words, that was already Christian practice before Africans was brought over here to the Americas, okay? So with, basically, she was already, there was African people that was already practicing Christianity, okay? So what I'm trying to get at is they went over here and all of a sudden they had practiced Christianity. They was uh, introduced to it. Now, maybe some of them were, but the rest of them, they already knew about it because of this movement, all right? So it says her teaching grew out of tradition of the Roman Catholic Church in Congo and caused her to upbraid the Catholic priest for not believing as she did. Donya Patrice believed the teaching of St. Anthony and used this claim to attempt to restore the ideal of Congo as a unified Christian kingdom. Kimpa Vita is seen as an anti-slavery figure and is known as a prefigure to modern African democracy movements. While the role of Danya Patrice Kimba Vita is widely overlooked, the years of her movement are some of the best documented in Congo's history. Okay, so check this out. All right, so Patrice Kimba Vita also referred to as Patrice of Congo, was born near Mount Kimbangu in Angola, ancient Congo kingdom around 1684. She was born into a family of the Congo nobility, probably of the class called Nwana Congo, and her father was a regional commander of the king's army. This noble status permitted King Bavita to study as Nganga Marinda, a form of a a form of religious medium. King Bavita was baptized Danya Batrice in her father's behest. Following the Catholic beliefs of the kings, some modern scholars believe that she was connected to King Antonio I because of his King Congo name, Vita Nkenga. All right. Now it says, at the time of her birth, Congo was torn by civil war. These wars had started shortly after the death of Antonio I at the Battle of Mbiwala or Mbiwila in 1665 and had resulted in the abandonment of the ancient capital of Sanyo Salvador, present-day Mbaza, Congo, in 1678 and a division of the country by rival pretenders to the throne. Okay. All right, so as you can see, that's another drawing a picture. That's a beautiful drawing. So according to her testimony, given at an inquest of her life, Kimba Vita had vision by God Congo and was considered to be a prophet, prophetess to the Congolese, declaring that Jesus, Yasha, y Yasia ya Congo, came from the Congo kingdom. She forbade her people to let the Portuguese in because they were going to enslave them. She kept proclaiming the message until the Portuguese Catholics burnt her at the stake. And as she claimed, the Portuguese Catholic finally started killing, murdering, raping, and enslaving the Congolese, breaking up families, and sending them away to the Americas. Now, this is interesting, okay? She put up a fight, so she thought because she conversed into becoming a Catholic, right, and start her Catholic movement, that it was going to make the uh, Congolese nation stronger, okay? Everybody was going to come together. And she was putting up a fight against the Portuguese people. 
She put up the fight against the Portuguese people. Now, people argue about Nzinga, whereas Nzinga, she she played the role because she was already kind of caught up in the mix, okay? She was born into it, so she had to play the role in doing what she had to do in order to save the Angola Empire, but for um, Batrice Kimba, she was putting up a fight. She said, she said to the people in the Congo, do not let the Portuguese come up in here because if they come up in here, they're going to start enslaving us and they're going to start sending our people away. And she put up a major fight for it. So and seeing that she was doing that, the Congolese Catholics decided to burn her. They put her at stake. They tried, they sized her and kept her quiet. So while they was killing this woman, they end up going ahead and taking the people, enslaving them, and sending them away to the Western Hemisphere, right? And send them away to the Western Hemisphere, send them to places like Brazil and South America and uh, Latin America, etc. But she knew this was going to happen. She said, do not let them come in here. Do not let them take over because once they take over, they're going to do is they're going to get the people they want and they're going to send them over to the Americas. And that's what she was trying to avoid from happening. But it did not work out. OK, so let's go ahead and continue. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, so it says call to mission. Batrice went to live amongst colonists sent out by King Pedro the Fourth. One of several rulers, I mean one of several rival rulers of Congo to reoccupy the ancient and now abandoned capital of San Yo Salvador. There was a great deal of religious fervor among the, these colonists who were tired of the endless civil wars in the country. And many had become followers of an old prophet, Ampolona Mafuta. During a supernatural illness in 1704, Kimba Vita claimed to have received vision of God while on the verge of death where and she was given divine commandment to preach to King Pedro the Fourth, and the spirit of Saint Anthony entered her body and revived her, resurrecting her as the reincarnation of Saint Anthony. She proclaimed that Jesus was a Congo and that there would be slavery if the if they trusted the Portuguese. Mm. Now, while in this state, she learned that Congo must reunite under a new king for the civil wars that had plagued Congo since the Battle of. In Mbiwa in 1665 had angered Christ. All right. She was ordered to unite the Congo under the king, under one king. Following the practices of Catholic monks, she forewent all her early possessions and set out on her mission to preach to King Pedro IV. During her mission, she destroyed Congo and Kisi charms inhabited by spiritual entities, claiming them to be false idols. She also destroyed non-Congolese Catholic paraphernalia. When she had her audience with King Pedro IV, she denounced him for his lack of will to restore the Congo to its former glory. Additionally, she denounced Italian priest Bernardo de Gallo, accusing him of not wanting black saints in Congo. King Pedro IV listened to the words of Kimba Vita, but did not act upon them. She then went to visit his rival, Jao II, at Mbula, near the Congo River, close to modern Matadi, who also refused to hear her. However, in the, in short time, she was able to gather a significant number of followers and became a factor in the struggle of power. Her movement recognized the papal primate, but was hostile against the European missionaries in Congo. Three months after Kimba Vita led her followers to the abandoned capital of Sao Salvador, where they would call to the people in the countryside and rapidly repopulate the city. This was recognized by Bernardo de Gallo, who claimed Kim Kimba Vita to be possessed by the devil to be an incredible act and led her to be adored and in acclaimed in as the restorer of Congo. Hey, Brother Bukhari, how you doing? Peace, brother. How you doing? I hope everything going good for you. 
All right. And then it goes on to say, while she was in Sao Salvador, she, she what was she and her followers occupied in 1705. She built a special residence for herself in the ruined cathedral. And also called the formerly ruined and abandoned capital to, to be reoccupied by thousands of most peasant followers. However, she soon won noble converts as well, including Pedro Castillo de Silva Quimbinga, the commander of one of Pedro's the fourth armies sent to reoccupy the city. Since he closed his devotion to Beatrice as an opportunity to rebel, Pedro the fourth decided to destroy Kimba Vida, all the more, all the more as his own wife, Hippolyta, had become an Antonian convert. During her time in Sao Salvador, Kimba Vida would grow to doubt the validity of her movement and her possession by Saint Anthony, as she became pregnant by a man named Yao. I mean, Yao was a Hio. Barrow, I'm not good at pronouncing his name, so please forget, forgive me for that. Despite her teaching of chastity, Kimba Vida believed that this sin had stripped her of virtue and is what led to her eventual downfall. Kimba Vida kept the pregnancy a secret from her followers and soon returned to her hometown with the child. But Tree sent out missionaries of her movement to other provenance. They were not successful in the coastal province of Soyo, where the prince expelled them, but they were much more successful in descending south, southern part of Soyo and Mbaba Lovata, which lay south of Soyo. There they won converse, especially among Parsian of the of the old queen, Susiana de Nobrega, Manuel Makaza, one of these Parsians, also became an Antonian and moved to Sao Salvador. All right, so you see religious tenets. Okay, so right here, let's look underneath this picture. Virgin Mary and Copper Ayo, excuse me, Virgin Mary and Copper Ayoy produced within the Congo Kingdom during the 18th century. Right. Okay, then it goes on to say. Much of her teaching is known from the Slave Antonia, a prayer she adapted from the Catholic prayer, Slave Regina, Regina, Hell Holy Queen, into an anthem of the movement. Among other things, the Slave Antonia taught that God was only concerned with believers' intention, not with sacraments or good works, that St. Anthony was the greatest one, in fact, a second God. Okay. Kimba Vida's teaching stated that Congolese Catholicism was the true form of Catholicism and that te the teachings and practice of white and Capuchin Catholics were incorrect and elitist. She believed that black people originated from the skin of a fig tree and thus many followers of Anton movement were clothed spawned from the bark of the of these trees. She believed that black was the true color of humanity. Oh, this sounds too familiar. And that white was the color of death. <laughs> oh, no, I, I had to laugh at that when she said, wait a minute, now she believed that black was the true color of humanity. <laughs> and that white was the color of death. <laughs> Ah, ah, that's a laughter right there. I'd laugh at that because guess what? That is all too common today. Wasn't that the teaching of Elijah Muhammad and many others? The, the, the teachings that we currently know today is very familiar. But this woman said it and this is what she taught. But she taught this in the Congo that the blacks, the what's the true color of the skin, was the true color skin of humanity, right? 
Like black people were human humans were originally black folks. This is what she believed. And then white was the color of death. <laughs> Ah, what? Let me say this. I just must say that she was a savage, man. She was radical as fuck. So she was not one of your average Christians. She wasn't an average Christian Congolese. She was a savage, man. She was a, a rebel. She was a rebel, for real. She was a rebel. She was like what Henry Manil Turner was when he said God was a black man. <laughs> She said black people, she said the color of humanity was originally black and white is the color of death. She was a rebel. <laughs> she, she ain't trust them Portuguese. She said, uh-uh, we don't need to have these Portuguese around here because these motherfuckers cannot be trusted. They cannot be trusted, man. And the spirit of St. Anthony is letting me, let telling, is telling you guys, telling you kings, King Pedro, I'm letting you know that do not let these folks come up in here because if they come up in here, they're going to do some sh shady ass shit. That's basically what she was trying to get at to the king of Congo at that time period. But he wasn't trying to hear her because she was talking that Christian babble stuff to him. And he's like, well, OK, this woman is delusional. She lose her mind. She always talking that old Christian babble shit. I ain't trying to hear all that. That was uh, Pedro, the fourth attitude towards her. Like, I'm not trying to hear that. Like, get the hell away. I don't want to hear that shit. Okay, I, I'm not trying to hear it. So they weren't trying to hear it, and many others weren't trying to hear it. Now, there was people who ended up listening to what she had to say because she had to give a gab, and she knew how to talk and knew how to get their attention. So her whole goal was to unite Congo because they were going through their civil wars at that time period. And she said, okay, well, we need to stop going through our civil wars, all right? Let's become one nation. Let's do this under the concept of one king. Let's do this under the concept of one God. That's what she did. And remind you, she was a young person. She was young. Okay, she was young. But she was a radical. And she was a, a, a rebel. <laughs> she was a rebel. <laughs> But that that part right there is funny. Oh wow, that's all too familiar. <laughs> okay. And it says, and thus taught that the principal characters in Christianity, including Jesus, Mary, and Saint Francis, were all born in Congo and were in fact Congolese. <laughs> so basically. She was a black nationalist before even the, the concept of black nationalism came into existence. She was a black nationalist herself. She had that black nationalist mentality. But at that time, they didn't use the word black. Okay. For her, it was the Congolese. But she had that mentality, though. She had that mindset. <laughs> All right. And it goes on to say. Many of these beliefs were greatly in influential in raising the hope and morale of the Congolese people during a time of civil war and the transatlantic slave trade, times when both national identity and the perceived human worth of the Congolese people were called into question. Kempa Vida held a weekly rite of rebirth wherein she renatched her reincarnation at St. Anthony ceremoniously dying each Friday and resurrecting each Saturday. In addition, Kimba Vita taught that her followers should lead lives of chastity, yet hypocritically she would become pregnant three times. Damn. Damn, damn wait a minute. Damn. Okay. So the word chastity means to be a virgin or to be celibate. Okay. To not have sex before marriage. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, she becomes pregnant three times. This woman get pregnant three times in a row. <laughs> okay, and then watch this. Two of these pregnancies she successfully aborted through the use of local medicine. Okay, she, su she successfully aborted her pregnancies. Through the use of local medicine, 
yet her third pregnancy would come to fruition. This pregnancy was hidden from her followers and the child was never discovered by the Antoine movement. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. But let's go deeper. Execution and its aftermath. Kimba Vita was captured near her hometown by Kenlaza and Voice, who had heard the crime of Kimba Vita's child. These envoys brought Kimba Vita and Jao Baro before Pedro IV, where she was to be tried for hearsay. Her, her here, Kimba Vita repented for her sins and asked that she be baptized. The Catholic Church denied her baptism, yet permitted her to be absolved through means of a holy confession. Kimpa Vida was burnt at the temporary capital of Invululu as a heretic. In 1706, by force loyal to Pedro IV, she was tried under Congo law as a witch and a heretic with the consent and counsel of the Capuchin Ferrers, Bernardo they was a Bernardo da Galao and Lorenzo da Lucia. Kimba Vita's son, whom she wished to name Antonio, was spared by Lorenzo de Lucia. Lorenzo denied her request name instead, naming the child Geroni was a Geroni Geronimo Geronimo. Custody of Geronimo was given to the church of his officials. Okay, so. All right, so she was um actually crucified pretty much because of the fact that she had sexual relationship outside of marriage. So by her being a Christian woman and being a leader of the Antonian movement, it made her look bad. So uh, her and the guy that she was sexually involved with, they both was punished. So she received the capital punish, which was which was death. Basically, it was death. And the son that she had, which was which she was gonna name Antonio, but she named him Geronimo, right? He was named Geronimo. He was given into the custody of the church officials. Okay, so the Catholic Church at that time, they look at if a woman, if you haven't sex outside of marriage, especially if you're a woman, that was immorality. It was immoral and it was disgusting and you was looked down upon. You were looked down upon and you was not respected because you did not follow the holy commandment, right? You did not uh, protect your virginity. Your virginity is something looked at as being sacred. So if you just going out here and giving away to somebody, and again, she got pregnant three times. Two of them she aborted. And one of them she killed. Now, why did she have to abort those other two? Because if they would have found out the other two child, the, the other two times she got pregnant, she would have been killed right then and there. So she had to, she had to get rid of them. Or otherwise, she would have got killed by the Catholic Church. Because she didn't, she didn't got pregnant. Twice. <laughs> but the third one, she said, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to keep this one, all right? I'm not going to get rid of this one because there's something in me that let me know that this child is going to be something special. So, but when it got back to the church, the church said, oh, oh, so you having sex outside of marriage, but you teaching your followers not to go out here and have sex outside of marriage and look what you're doing. Okay, we need, we're going to have to kill you because you are not following the holy command and you're not keeping your promises or words. You're not being sacred. Yeah, the Catholic folks, they were ruthless at that time period. Very ruthless. And they were doing a lot of killing with people. If you did not believe in the concept of their God, and you tried to challenge the concept of uh, God and all of that, you was going to get killed. Just like Galileo. They killed Galileo because he challenged the concept of God. He challenged the concept of science about uh, the earth being the center and the sun revolving around the earth versus the earth revolving around the sun. 
And the Catholic Church, they didn't like that. They felt they had all the answers. They said, oh, no, you don't question God. That's the word of God. So they killed him. And because this woman, she ended up having sex outside of marriage and got pregnant. They said, okay, you can have this baby. Once she had that baby, they killed her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is it, yep, that's the evil. I mean, just imagine getting killed just because you had sex and you got pregnant. Hmm. She didn't think that day was gonna come, but it did. But let's continue. It said that. Antonian prophetic movement outlasted her death. Her followers continued to believe that she was still alive. And it was only when Pedro the Force, I mean the fourth forces took San, San, San Yo Salvador in 1709 that the political force of her movement was broken. And most of her former noble adherents re renounced their beliefs and rejoined the Catholic Church. Some hint of the strength of her teaching may be glimpsed by the fact that 18th century Congo religious art often showed Jesus as an African and that St. Anthony known as Tony Malalu was very prominent. More recently, some see present day Kimbanguzianism and was it Kimbanguzianism, Maswaniism and Tokizime as its successor. Okay, so let me let's look up these names real fast. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so so Kimba Kimba Guism, I don't know what, if I'm saying it right. So Kimba Guism, a Christian new religious movement, right? Professed by the Christian of Jesus Church of Jesus Christ on Earth by his special envoy Simon Kim Kimbagu. Okay, so it was founded by Simon Kimbagu in the Belgian Congo in 1921. We're not going to get too much into it. And let's see. And Masawaniism is a political association that was founded in French Congo by Andre Matsawa in, in the 1920s, involved into a religious political movement after the death of Matsawa in 1942. Yeah. Okay, so her religion, Antonism, led to those movements. Okay, so those movements came out of the school of Antonism, the ones I just mentioned. Tradition circulated in Mbaza, Congo, right? In 2002, also plays great significance in the role of Beatrice's mother as an inspiration for the prophet Simon Kimbangu, and also as playing a role in his continuation. In in fact, her mother was present in the aftermath of her death. Okay, so these are the references at the bottom of the page. These are the literature, and these are the external links, so you guys can look up the information for yourselves uh, to find out more about Kimpa Vida. So, as you can see, she was a young woman. She died between the age 21 and 22. She was young. She was very young. So let's look more into uh, the Antonism, okay? Let's look more into it. Let's see what we can find. Okay, let's see what we can find. All right, Antonism, as you can see. 
and it says, what what was it? A Zacriate Bakongo Catholic movement formed in the Kingdom of Congo, okay, between 1704 and 1708 as a development out of the Roman Catholic Church in Congo, yet without denying the authority of the Pope. Its founder was a very young, charismatic woman named Patrice Kimba Vita, okay, it says she was possessed by St. Anthony of Padua, and she became known for healing and other miracles. It was eventually suppressed by King Pedro IV of Congo, and Donna Patrice was burned at the stake as a heretic. Now, what is a heretic? Let's look at it. All right, so let's look at what is a heretic. Okay. A heretic, a person who differs in opinion from established religious dogma. A baptized member of the Roman Catholic Church who refused to acknowledge or accept a revealed truth. One who differs in opinion from an accepted belief or doctrine. So basically what they were saying that she was a nonconformist. She was a nonconformist. Because by her start her own movement and then because the way she preached, it was different from how the Roman Catholic preached. She pre preached that the Congo people, that humanity was originally black and that the white skin was deaf. Right? And then plus she was having sex outside of marriage. They said, oh yeah, we got to you, you too much. You are rebellious. You a wild thing. That's how they felt. She was a wild thing. She didn't, she went against the traditional norms of Catholicism. Okay. Dang, this woman is one interesting person. I, I pretty much like her. <laughs> I pretty much like her so far. <laughs> all right all right so let's kind of skip down this a little bit okay so it says the king the kingdom of congo was the largest and most powerful kingdom in central africa but its influence was waning during the 17th century portugal became the dominant military and economic force in the region the portuguese had begun converting people of the Congo to Catholicism as early as the 15th century. The nobility of the Congo and the commoners both pra practiced Catholicism, right? So Roman Catholicism has had been introduced to sub-Saharan sub Africa in the 15th century and had attracted a wide following in Congo. But Therese claimed Anthony had told her through a vision to create a new Congolese Catholicism, and she incorporated various native practices and tradition into her movement. The major differences between Roman Catholicism and Antonianism were the rejection of the cross, as it was seen as being responsible for Christ's death, as well as the rejection of bapti baptism, confession, and prayer. Among her beliefs were that Jesus was a black man. <laughs> That was how I believed that Jesus was a black man. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because she was rebellious. She was not going for the tradition. She was unorthodox. She was unorthodox. She was not going for it. So she created her own principle. And I got to give it to her. You know what I'm saying? She, she did that. You know what I'm saying? She did her thing. She created it. She was like, nah. Bump all that. You you white folks can have that shit over there. That was her answer. to like them white folks, them, which basically with the Portuguese, they can have that shit over there. We 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 gonna create our own shit. Like we don't want your shit. We don't want your version of Christianity. We gonna create our own version of Christianity. <laughs> but check this out. <laughs> Among her beliefs were that Jesus was a black man and that the Congo was the real home of Christianity. She also held that heaven was for Africans. <laughs> when I tell you this woman was radical, do you know that's radical? That's a rebel right there. That's what you call a black nationalist. All right. 
before black nationalism even came into existence. <laughs> she said heavens was for Africans. <laughs> That's how she felt. She said, it ain't for these motherfuckers over here because we know they the enemies, man. We, we don't want them motherfuckers over here. You know what I'm saying? We don't even need to let them in our kingdom, man. They they trying to take over. We the one that heaven is for us. And Jesus was a black man. Not that motherfucker. <laughs> and this is long before Elijah Muhammad, Henry McNeil Turner, Noble Drew Ali, uh, what's his name? Uh, George McGuire. This is long before all of these different religion, religious teachers, uh, Father Divine, um, Clarence 13, S. A lot. This is before they even came along and taught what they taught, right? This became this way before these different movements came about. When she created Antonism, that was her thought. Jesus was a black man. He from the Congo. The Congo is the home of Christianity. And that heaven was for the Africans. And their white skin was deaf. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Amazing. And she began to preach that she was possessed by St. Anthony of Padua, who was a major Portuguese saint. All right. So it says she was trained as Nganga Marinda, an individual who consult the supernatural world to solve problems within the community. And acted as a medium, speaking the pronouncements of St. Anthony, the teachings were a mixture of Congo religious rituals and nativism and Catholicism. All right. According to this vision, Jesus was born in Mbanza, Congo, and baptized not at Nazareth, but at in the northern province of Insuni. While Mary's mother was a slave of the Congo nobleman in Zimba, in Pangi, Donna Patrice also disclosed new versions of the Avenue Maria and Save Regina that were more relevant to the Congolese mode of thoughts. All right. And so she prophesied a new golden age to her followers, one that would follow the end of European presence in the Congo. European would be found around the Congo capital city of Mbaza, Congo, by her followers. And trees would turn to silver and gold. Danya Patrice acknowledged Papo authority, yet her cult was hostile to European missionaries. <laughs> Damn! Oh, this shit right here. I like this woman. I ain't even gonna care, but I like this one right here. But I'm not even finna care. I'm not finna care, but I I like this woman. I like this woman. <laughs> Damn! Damn! I wish I would have known about her. Damn! Damn! <laughs> But she was more radical than the damn king himself. But she should have been the leader. <laughs> if you ask me, in my opinion, she should have been the leader. But at that time, they had an uh, attitude about women being in leadership and power. But but she was on some shit. She was on that radicalism. But she was on what we call today black nationalism. Man, that's what she was on. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Damn, she was rebellious, boy. She was she was bucking on them. <laughs> they felt like, oh nah, she bucking too much, man. We're gonna have to put her ass to sleep. <laughs> boy, boy, she was bucking. I'm saying, man, homegirl was bucking. She went with that shit. She was bucking. <laughs> she was letting them know like she. <laughs> Anyway, it says teaching that they were corrupt and unsympathetic to the spiritual needs of the Congolese Catholic. Well, you know what? She she had a point. She felt that they were on they were corrupt and unsympathetic to the spiritual needs of the Congolese people. <laughs> Boy, she was bucking. She was bucking for real. Uh-huh. 
And then it goes on to say, Don Don Patrice's political influence was a threat to Pedro the Fourth. Okay, so let's go back. The Antonians, led by Don Don Patrice, occupied territory uh, in Banza, Congo. It served as a base for Antonian missionaries who were sent by Don Patrice to convert followers to our movement and to urge rulers of the divided. Congo territories to unite under the one king. Her aim was to end the civil wars that had plagued the kingdom since the arrival of the Portuguese. Daniel Patrice's political influence was a threat to Pedro IV and the Portuguese administration that supported him. In 1706, Pedro IV had Daniel Patrice arrested and burned at the stake for heresy under the urging of Portuguese Compuchian monks. The movement of Antonius did not immediately die when she did, and in 1708, 20,000 Antonians marched on King Pedro IV, who eventually defeated them and restored his kingdom. Although the movement had a short life under the leadership of Donia Patrice, artifacts have survived, including St. Antonio figurines made of ivory, brass, and wood, affixed uh, to crosses used as the staff finals of uh, finales and worn as pendants. These images called Tony Malu or Ant. And Anthony of Good Fortune in King Congo served to guard their barriers against illness and other mis misfortunes. All right. So she what? Woo! All right, that's a lot of good information right there. That that one right there was on some radical shit. Man, man, she was on some radical shit. All right. All right, but let's see. Let's make sure that we got information that backs up the sources, okay? That she uh that was put on his. So I got some information um from a website called cdamm.org, which stands for Critical Dictionary of Apoc Apocalyptic and Millenary Movement. All right. Yeah, she does seem interested. That lady, boy. <laughs> boy, she had that radical mindset, boy. Listen, boy, she was also she was also radical shit. She was like, man, get these motherfucking Portuguese out of here, man. We were doing all right until these motherfuckers came up in here and got down doing what they did. And now there's civil war. We need to get back to who the fuck we was. We were doing just fine. Like, she was bucking. She was bucking. Pedro's like, Chill, like chill, go somewhere and sit down, man. You're doing too much. Chill out, chill out with all that radical Christian shit you talking. She was like, nah, man, we gotta do something about these motherfuckers, man. We need to get back to being under being one kingdom, being under one leadership. And remind she's a young girl. Now she young. Shada was young, bucking like that. <laughs> boy, she boy, she had a following too. What? That's salute. Salute, 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 salute. <laughs> no, I mean salute for real though. Like if Shada can do that, boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy, she was bucking. She was on that shit. She was bucking. She was about that shit, boy. She want she wasn't finna play no games with them. Like, hey, she was she kept bucking, boy. She kept bucking for real. <laughs> All right. So this article again is critical dictionary of ap apocalyptic and millenary movements. All right. Kimba Vita, Arthur Alalin Makoko Gambat. All right. So it was published on January twenty, uh, January thirty first of twenty twenty one. So that ain't been long ago. It's just recently. All right. Check this out. Let's see, what can we find in here? Um, so it goes into the introduction, right? It says, in the early 18th century, Kimba Vita, a.k.a. Danya Beatrice, intervened in the history of the kingdom of Congo as an envoy chosen by God to restore order in the midst of the chaos caused by, Bo by the Portuguese colonial denomination and the civil war that was pitting the heirs to the throne against one another. Her Masonic rhetoric and the movement she led prominent reaction from the Catholic and colonial authorities as well as the Congo atrocity. This article discusses the emergence of this movement as Masonic, millenarian, and apostolic 
features as well as the persistence of its legacy in present-day Congolese Masonic and millenary expressions. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, okay. So here we go. It says Kimba Vida cannot study aside from the Congo Kingdom of Congo, where she was born, raised, and executed. Congo oral tradition by Kimba Vida are either lost or unreliable, being refashioned from academic sources. The primary sources documented in the Kingdom of Congo are the writings of the Italian mathematician, mathematician uh, Filippo Pegafeda, who transcribed into Italian the account given by Portuguese explorer Darte Lopez, as well as of those Jesuit and Capuchin missionaries, such as Cavazzi and Bernardo de Galao, which all other historians quote, particularly the latter when Kimba Vida is discussed. These historians are de Lacres, Jadin, Vancia, Balladia, Randles, Cinda, Thornton, and Hush. Recent doctoral dissertation that discussed the Christianization of the Kingdom of Congo include Kim Ka, was it Kawi, Kawita or Kawita in Buku and Vermont. In the early 18th century, in Baza, Congo, the capital of the Kingdom of Congo, renamed Sayo Salvador by the Portuguese, was in deep turmoil, but eventually, but an equally profound longing to restore the kingdom in the capital under a single authority was perceptible when a young 22 practices came to prominence in 1704. Raised in an aristocratic family of the Congo ethnic group, Kimba Vida had received a traditional innation, initiation of Kimpasi, of which she was a priestess. She had also received an in-depth Catholic education informed by the devotion of the Virgin Mary, the saint, the sacraments, and the use of rosary and crucifixes. It is documented that she knew the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Salve Regina. <clears throat> All right. So then it goes on to say why she was seriously ill and on the brink of death in her agony, she saw a pharaoh dressed as Capuchin. He identified himself as St. Anthony, who had been seen who had been sent by God into her head to preach to the people and announce the restoration of the kingdom. All right. Okay, so... Now, check this out. It says, Kimba, vision, Kimba Vida's mission and prophesizing. Kimba Vida began proclaiming the impending arrival of Judgment Day, putting for three main themes. First, firstly, she condemned the use of the cross and image of Christ, which many Congolese perceive as new, more powerful fetish, fetishes than the traditional magic. Secondly, she pre preached for the first time that a black Christ would come to liberate oppressed people from bondage. Thirdly, she prophesied the prompt restoration of the kingdom of Congo, bringing with it, bringing with it the return of prosperity. Appropriating the imported Catholic saints in the traditional logic of ancestor worship, she identified Jesus, Mary, St. Francis, St. Alexis, and St. Anthony of Padua as Congo ancestors, explained that Congo was the actual holy land and that the founding figures of Christianity were Africans. She also theorized about Catholic prayers and sacraments haranguing her followers. You say Slav, but you don't know why. What matters to God is your intention. Your intention is what God accepts. Marriage is useless for your intention is what God accepts. Baptism is useless for your intention is what God accepts. Confessions are useless for your intention is what God accepts. Woo! Once again, that woman ain't your average Christian. 
She was not your average Christian. <laughs> Again, she was young. That's a young rebellious spirit. What? <laughs> and it says the national movement of spiritual revival initiated by Kempa Vita was known as the St. Antonian movement. It was a millenary project of restoration of the kingdom of Congo that will free the Congolese from colonial oppression, bringing back peace and national unity. According to the Gallo's redemption of Kimba Vita's preaching, Europeans were accused of monopolizing the secret of divine revelation and the wealth deriving from it while countering the salvation offered by black saints so that whites were ultimately considered devils by St. Antonians. <laughs> Y'all want to know why am, I, why am I laughing about this? Because... Again, this woman ain't your average Christian. Do this sound all familiar? Do this sound too familiar? Why nobody ever talked about the Antonian movement <laughs> in the Congos, man? If we would have known this back in the days here in America, I think it would have been so many rebellious spirits out there. See, this is the Christianity that they don't talk about. This, this is not the Roman Catholicism they don't talk about. This ain't your average Roman Catholic girl. <laughs> she went with the BS. She said, we're going to have to change some of this shit around because she grew up as a Catholic. Okay, She learned of, uh, the Lord's Prayer and all of that stuff. But she said, some of this shit got to go, man. Did, did, do y'all not see this fuckery around here? You think I'm going to follow the ways of these motherfuckers over here? Nah, fuck that shit. I'm going to take the Christianity and I'm going to radicalize that shit and I'm going to make it about my people and about what I want it to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're welcome. you welcome. This is my first time hearing about her, too, but I'm loving her. I'm loving her mindset. I'm loving her logic because she wasn't with the bullshit. <laughs> she wasn't with that fuckery. She was trying to unite her people. She wanted them Portuguese to get the fuck up out of Africa. That's what she wanted. She wanted them to get the fuck up out of the Congos, man. And she was doing whatever she can. She thought she can use religion as a way to bring about political statement against the foreign people. <laughs> boy, boy, they woo, boy. <laughs> Oh, Wait a minute, check this out. It says, according to De Gallo's redemption of Kimba Vida's preaching, Europeans were accused of monopolizing the secret of divine revelation and the wealth deriving why, why it yeah, from, from it while countering the salvation offers by black saints so that whites were ultimately considered devils by the St. Antonians. <laughs> And what she say? And says soon the Congo aristocracy and Catholic authorities began paying attention and seeking to hinder the progress of the movement. Kimpa Vita was perceived as a menace for she worked miracles, spoke against Catholic sacraments and burnt fetishes, but also crosses. Furthermore, her giving birth while proclaiming herself a virgin was a, was held against her by the Capuchins, <coughs> who persist, precipitated her arrest. Following Kimba Vita's arrest on the authority of King Pedro IV on Mount Kimbagu, where she had found shelter with her lover and their baby in July of 1706, an ecclesiastical tribunal sentenced the young prophecies to be burned at the stake. Whew. Damn. Boy. <laughs> Kimba Vita's legacy. Not all historians agree about Kimba Vita's legacy. For some, the St. Antonio movement died out for in the wake of her execution. Many of her followers, including the man she had designed as the legitimate king, died in pharisaical conflicts. For others, Kimba Vita's matrodom fostered a long-lasting sense of belonging among the Congo people. For her messianic preaching deeply shaped Congolese history and collectively identity. Indeed, without having welded any official power Kim Kimba Vito is considered as a, a, a historic forerunner of African mezzanism and millennialism 
to that she is reverent as having planted the seeds of nationhood in Angola, Congo, Brazzaville, and the De Democratic Republic of Congo at a time when the Portuguese meant to stay indefinitely in the Kingdom of Congo, Kimba Vida harnessed the creative powers of Mazinism to inscribe the colonial order in a temporal arc tending towards liberation. She has told the history of the King of Kingdom of Congo as a glorious past that white settlers had falsified, demanding reparation and denouncing the subjugation of Africans under the colonial yoke. And it goes on to say, today, Kimba Vida is celebrated by many as a Congolese Jonah Ark, whose Messianism fostered a national consensus in Central Africa long before nation states were born there, bequeathing a legacy of millenarianism among the Congo people. Although the St. Antonians no longer exist, Kimba Vida's memory which remains inseparable from mysticism is very is still very much alive in two Congos and Angola and even beyond Central Africa. Her brand of messianism resonates in the expanding Ngunzis movement, who nativist message of rejection of white Jesus and even the Bible strikes a chord in the three countries. The restoration of the Co Kingdom of Congo remains central to the beliefs of the Kumbagis church and many other neo prophet excuse me neo prophetic movements in central africa whoo damn <laughs> damn let's see so let's see um hmm all right so i have some books that i want you guys to uh look into and i'm going to um I'm going to share it on my uh, YouTube community page so you guys can look it up for yourself if you want to learn more about this powerful, magnificent woman. And I'm going to tell you why I say she magnificent. That woman was booking. When I say she booking, she was booking. She, well, she had balls for real. Okay, so this book right here is called The Congolese St. Anthony Danya Patrice Kimba Vida and the Antonian Movement, 1604 to 1706. Uh, John K. Thornton. So look at this book, okay? If you want to learn more, John K. Thornton. Then also, another read material I have for you guys to check into. Uh, Central Africans and Cultural Transformation in the American Diaspora. All right. So it kind of goes into how the Roman Catholic practice, right, in the Congo area and Angola area brought about influences to the people in Brazil and Haiti and places like that. So that's what it really goes into. So it's relatable to this subject. All right. Okay. So. That's all I have, and I want to go ahead and share my thoughts. <laughs> I want to say this, man. <laughs> what woman in history was bucking? <laughs> like, what woman do you know that can buck like that? That can go at the oppressors and the colonists, right, and tell them, by taking their religion, right? She took the Roman Catholic religion and she created her own movement behind that shit. Now, she was a young girl and she had this radical mindset. And she was, the way she was teaching, I was like, I ain't even gonna lie, I was amazed. Boy, I wish I would have known about it at that time period. So, as a matter of fact, let's look up what the Nguzi is um, or are. The Nguzi. 
Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to the source. Give me a second. That's right. That's right. It's not religion that's holding her back. You're right. It was used as a tool for liberation, and she knew how to use it. See, at the end of the day, what people, this is what people got to understand. Then this is what folks who are atheists and all, they, they say they old. Religion messed people up this day, other. Excuse me. Religion messed people up this Thing other, which is partly true. Yes, religion does do, does some type of damage. Okay, but at the end of the day, religion is just a blueprint. It's the teachings that will bring about corruption. It's the people. It depends on who the leader is and who's teaching those doctrines. So religion itself is just a blueprint, but it's all about the psychology of the individual. That's what it's all about. It's the psychology. Even if you take away religion, right, you still have corrupted minds. You still have people who will bring about chaos. You still have uh, people who are menaces to society. You're going to have all these different things. So take away religion. That's not going to stop from stop the corruption of humanity. That's not going to stop people from doing anything, even with these political movements. You have corruption in those political movements, social movements. You have uh, corruption, economic movements. You got corruption. Humans are going to operate from the human nature. All right. If you understand human nature and you understand human behavior and you understand, and you understand cognitive psychology, cognitive science, once you understand that, it will make sense. Because all it is is just a blueprint. So whether your religion be Islam, Christianity, Judaism, uh, uh, Buddhism, Jainism, Confucianism, Taoism, whatever, Hinduism, those are just blueprints. At the end of the day, it's about the psychology of individuals. That's what it's all about, the psychology. And the main purpose, their intention. That's what you got to focus on. So people get caught up on the blueprint, but not look at the psychology, look not looking at the mind of individuals. So you're right, Brother Ron, you are correct. Yes, she used it as tool for liberation. Absolutely. She was a young. But let's look at the Ingunganis. I just want to look at the Ingunganis real fast because these people here. Or maybe I'll do a subject on them one day.
All right. Um, <clears throat> well, you know what? I'll uh, focus on that subject another day. But, yeah, but I want to study about the Ngunganese people. <laughs> but, boy, I don't know. Them, them Congolese folks, boy, they got some rebellious spirits there. They got some rebellious spirits, boy. Them <laughs> Boy, listen, man. She should have became the empress of the Congo. She should have been the one that was running leadership and power because she had that radical mindset. She had that leadership mindset. <laughs> yes, wow. I'm very impressed. This happened to be one of my favorite subjects to do. This is one of my favorite topics thus so far. Like... I, I'm pretty admired by this woman. I really am. I, I admire her. I admire her thinking. I admire what she was about. I admire the, the principle that she was standing on. Like, I admire everything about this woman. So, one day, uh, I'm going to get a physical copy. His name was, I'm going to write his name here. That was his name. His name was Pedro the Fourth. He was the one that destroyed the system. Mm -hmm. Pedro the Fourth, because he felt like she was gonna ruin it for him. Mm hmm. Dang, boy. I wish I would have known more about her. Yes, he was the leader at that time. Yes, Pedro the Fourth was the leader at that time period. Yes, while she was uh starting that movement, he was. Yep. But all right, you guys, you guys, I gotta get off of here. I gotta get off of here because I gotta uh chill out. You know what I'm saying? I got a long night ahead of me, so. But it was good talking to y'all. And make sure you guys. Oh, no. Of course, they don't want you to know about Revolutionary uh, Run. They don't. They don't want you to know about that. They not See, it's a lot of things they're not going to tell you. Okay? A lot of stuff they not going to teach into the school system. All right? Or teach. And not yet, and even some colleges and universities, they're not going to talk about it. Because they know that it's going to bring about radicalism so when you have somebody like her who was a revolutionary who was a radicalist they try to keep that as a secret but it's a good thing thank goodness for academia thank, thank goodness for uh, encyclopedias and books and whatnot we can be able to find out more information and gain access to them all right but anyways, um, you guys have a good evening. I have a long day ahead of me. I want to thank you guys for coming in, watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and share the channel, like the channel, and check out all the videos that I've done on here by other uh, individuals um, in history and whatnot and other subject matters. Okay, so. Oh, no, they don't. You're right about that. They don't. Many of them don't. Many of them don't. All right, then, but, yeah, again, I had to take it to Central Africa. I had to take it to the Congos, to the to the uh, Angola area, right, because that's our roots. That's our lineage. That was, that's our bloodline, Central West Africa. Where will we be without these people? Where will we be without these people, man? All right, then, but you guys take it easy anyways, and um, I'll talk to you all later. So peace and power elevation be to all of you. This your girl, Tiffany, and I'm logging out saying deuces. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate it, and shout out to the new subscribers on here. All right. Thanks.